so we have completed the lesson and we have discussed the diversity and functions of the leaves stems and the roots so now i'm going to discuss the questions so these are the questions given in your grade 8 science textbook that is unit 3 exercise i will discuss that first so i am sure once you completed studying the lesson you have already answered the questions if not answer it first answer it by yourself first and then listen to my discussion so the first question write the main function of the given plant parts so they want you to write the main function that is important main function of the given plant parts so what are the parts plant leaves stem and roots so what is the main function of plant leaves they are special structures adapted to carry out photosynthesis so that is what we have to write here photosynthesis photosynthesis then if we take the stem that is the part that supports and bears all the other parts of the shoot system in addition to that it helps the plant to keep it upright as well as transport of water and minerals to other parts of the plant so since they have asked for the main function we can say support and bear the rest of the shoot system so support and bear the other parts so here when i say other parts it's the parts of the shoot system only and since we need to write a short answer i am writing it this way then the roots what is the function of the root that is to root the plant to the soil or anchor the plant to the soil and absorb water and minerals the main function so here anchor the plant plant to the soil and also absorb water and minerals you know the reason why these are the main functions because all these parts are adapted to carry out other functions as well so did you all write these answers i am sure you did then i will move on to the next question write the special adaptation look at the question carefully special adaptations of the following plant roots stems and leaves so here you have to write if in one plant there are more than one adaptations you have to write all three or else it can be an adaptation only to roots or to the stems or the leaves so you write that or sometimes all three so whatever you have learned whatever you know spe the special adaptations so you have to write so the plants are cactus carrot banyan aloe sweet potato pepper begonia navahandi niangala orchid guava and rampe plant so first you all have to write down all the special adaptations now i will move on to the first one first one is cactus what are the adaptations now cactus is a plant that grows well in arid environments so because of that the leaves are reduced to spines and the stem becomes photosynthetic you can remember the cactus plant so we have to write both those properties here or both those adaptations here what is the first one leaves reduce to spines and then there was the photosynthetic stem those are the adaptations of cactus then what about carrot what is the special adaptation 
it stores food in the tap root. So the tap root becomes the tuberous root or storage root. So here we can say tap root stores food. What is the other name given? Tuberous root. Tuberous roots. So that is the special adaptation of carrot. Then what do we have next? We have banyan plant. Now what is this? You can remember banyan is a very large plant with a lot of branches spread all around. So to bear the weight of the branches, what do we have? The prop roots, those are adventitious roots that are present in banyan. So here if we say prop roots, that is more than enough. We don't have to explain any of these properties. The next one, what do we have next? Aloe. What is the special function? Now aloe again grows in arid environments. So it has special tissues to store water and therefore the leaves become fleshy. So what do we write here? Leaves have adaptations to store water. They are fleshy leaves. So is that correct students? Cactus, the leaves are reduced to spines and it is a photosynthetic stem. Carrot, they have tap root that stores food so we call it a tuberous root. Then ban banyan has prop roots and aloe has leaves that are adapted to store water and that is why the leaves become fleshy. Then I will move on to the next slide where we have sweet potato. Now what is the adaptation of sweet potato? This is also a tuberous root. Their food is stored in adventitious roots. So here food storage storage in adventitious roots. What is the other name given to it? We call it the tuberous roots. What is the next one? Next one is pepper. Now what is the adaptation of pepper? It has a very thin stem and it grows around the support. So it is a climbing stem. So climbing stem Climbing stem or in other words we call them as climbers. What is the structure they use to climb or hold on to the support? Climbing or clasping roots. So here they have climbing, climbing or clasping roots. So here students both these are related to one another. So you shouldn't just write one and leave the other one out. You have to write both. Why? Climbing stem is an adaptation of the stem. Climbing or clasping root is an adaptation of roots. So you have to write both characters. Then we have begonia. What is begonia? What is the adaptation? It shows propagation by leaves. So here propagation by leaves. Then what do we have? We have Navahandi. Now you can remember the structure of Navahandi plant. What is that for? Adaptation to reduce transpiration. What is it? Reduce number of leaves and you can remember 
the stem is also green in color so that means photosynthetic stem fleshy stem photosynthetic stem so we have to write both properties reduced number of leaves reduced number of leaves and also photosynthetic stem these are the adaptations here is that correct did you all write everything down i'm sure you did so then the next one is niangala where did we discuss this you can remember how there are diversity in parts of the leaf the leaf tip leaf base the leaf blade all these the margin of the leaf they are all diverse and niangala has a curled leaf tip you can remember that so that is what we need to write here leaf tip is curled so that is the adaptation of niagala that's a no, example for the curled leaf tip then we have orchid now this has few adaptations what type of a plant is orchid it is an epiphyte so it grows at a high elevation on a support or at the on a branch of a tree a tall tree and because of that it cannot root into the soil so what does it have it has aerial roots so one thing this is an epiphyte and also it possesses aerial roots what is the function of the aerial root to absorb moisture from the atmosphere then we have the next one that is guava what is the adaptation of guava it has leaves a special leaf arrangement what is that leaves are opposite and paired that is one another one they propagate by roots so two adaptations here leaves are paired and opposite that is one adaptation and also what is the other one they have propagative roots so propagative roots so another special adaptation what is the last one last one is rampe plant what is this it can grow in coastal areas sandy soil environment so what does it need it needs stilt roots so the special adaptation is stilt root so now students can you all understand all these adaptations these are special adaptation shown by plants so niangala the leaf tip is curled orchid it is an epiphyte and it has aerial roots to absorb moisture guava the leaves are paired and opposite why to absorb sunlight efficiently and it has propagative roots propagation by roots and rampe plant it has stilt root to hold the stem of the plant upright so these are all special adaptation shown by plants i am sure you were able to write them correctly then we will move on to the next question fill in the blanks the pattern in which leaves grow on the stem is known as what is the term given for that this is known as leaf arrangement then the second one sugarcane palmyra are examples for what they have storage stems or 
sugarcane and palmyra are example for storage stems. The third one, the leaves of the cactus tree reduced to spines is an adaptation to minimize what? What is minimized by reducing the leaf to spines? Transpiration. So the leaves of the cactus tree reduced to spines is an adaptation to minimize transpiration. The next one, curry leaves, belly, breadfruit trees often use the for propagation. What do they use? They use their roots for propagation. The roots are used for propagation. Then the next one, respiratory roots are specialized roots that can be seen in what type of plants? Respiratory roots they are present in mangrove plants. Mangrove plants. So if we read this again. The pattern in which leaves grow on the stem is known as leaf arrangement. Sugarcane, palmyra are examples for storage stems. The leaves of the cactus tree reduced to spine is an adaptation to minimize transpiration. Curry leaves, belly, breadfruit trees often use the roots for propagation. Respiratory roots are specialized root that can be seen in mangrove plants. So I am sure students you were able to answer all these questions correctly. So with that, we have completed the questions in your textbook. So that is not enough for practice. So I am going to discuss some more extra questions. So extra questions, extra question 1, select the correct answer. Now you are very familiar with these types of multiple choice type questions, MCQ questions. What is the first one? The main Raw materials of photosynthesis are, look at the question carefully, main raw materials. You know that there are factors needed for photosynthesis. You, the plant needs sunlight, it has chlorophyll. In addition to that, it needs carbon dioxide and water. Out of these four factors, what are the raw materials? You can remember we wrote the equation. Carbon dioxide and water are used to produce food. So look at the answers. Water is a raw material. Food is what is produced. Sunlight is needed. It is a factor needed but not a raw material. Oxygen is a byproduct. Carbon dioxide, water that is correct. Food and carbon dioxide. So as I said food is produced. Carbon dioxide is a raw material. So the answer has to be carbon dioxide and water. Then the next one. Correct relationship between the features of leaf blade and photosynthesis. So the leaves are adapted to absorb sunlight efficiently. So they can carry out photosynthesis efficiently. So the leaf blade. Photosynthesis is less in a leaf with broad leaf. That's wrong. It has to be higher when the leaf blade is high, broad, photosynthesis is more. So photosynthesis is high in a leaf with small leaf area. That is also wrong. Photosynthesis is high in a leaf with broad leaf area. That is correct. There is no relationship between the area of leaf blade and the amount of photosynthesis. That is wrong. So it has to be the third answer. When the leaf area increases, it becomes a broader leaf, the amount of photosynthesis increases. Then the next one, leaf with a curved leaf tip. Now leaf with a curved leaf tip, look at the question, curved leaf tip. So you have to remember, now recall all the different types of leaf tips. First one, hibiscus, what type of leaf tip? You can remember it has a serrate margin and it has a pointed leaf tip. 
high discus, shoe flower, pointed leaf tree. Temple tree, you can remember, it's like this. Bow tree, it has a nice point, very sharp point. And jack, jack also has a somewhat like this, slightly pointed. So what is the leaf that has curved leaf tip? It is the temple tree. So high discus slightly pointed, temple tree curved, bow tree it's sharp and pointed, jack also it's somewhat pointed. That's how you have to recall. Then the next one, plant that shows whirl leaf arrangement. A whirl leaf arrangement. What is the whirl leaf arrangement? Three or more leaves start at the same point of the say around the stem at the same level around the stem so that it has a whirl arrangement. So if we take guava, guava has opposite leaf arrangement. The leaves are paired and opposite. What about rukatana? Rukatana has a whirl leaf arrangement. Anona, it has alternate leaf arrangement. And Kanda has a spiral leaf arrangement. So what is the answer here? It has to be Rukatan. Is that correct students? Okay then. I will move on to the next one. Not an example of a stem that stores food. So here you have to look at two things. It has to be a stem. It has to store food. Now look at all these examples. Radish stores food but in the tap root. Potato stores food in the stem. So that is correct. Ginger again it is a stem that stores food. Then turmeric that is also a stem that stores food. So not an example of a stem that stores food. So it has to be radish. Not an example. That is also important. Not an example of a stem that stores food. So all of these store food. Radish stores food in tap roots. So that is the answer. Then the sixth one. What is not again here not? What is not a part of the shoot system of the plant? Not a part of the shoot system. Axillary bud. Yes, from that only the leaves, the branches, flowers, all those grow. Fruit, yes, it is a part of the shoot system. Tap fruit, obviously it's the root system. Then flowers, flowers are also part of the shoot system. So out of these, what is not a part of the shoot system of the plant? It is the tap fruit. Then I will move on to the next one. Not a feature of cactus plant. Again, look at the question. Not a feature of cactus plant. Now, stems store water. They are fleshy stems. So, obviously, they will be able to store water. You can remember the cactus plant. It has a structure like this. And here you can see these spines. So, stems can store water. They are Cactus is like this. So stem stores water. Leaves carry out photosynthesis. Is that correct? Now in a cactus plant, what are these? These are the spines. And what are the spines? They are the leaves. The leaves are reduced to spines. So can they carry out photosynthesis? No. Stems produce food. Yes, they are photosynthetic stems. And spines are present. So what is the answer? Not a feature of cactus plant. Leaves carry out photosynthesis. Is that okay? Do you all understand that? So you have to remember all the adaptations and relate everything to the plant. Plant that has an aerial root. First one, vanilla. Vanilla has an aerial root. Mahakadol, what does that have? It has a respiratory roots. It has respiratory roots. Pepper, it has climbing or clasping roots and dahlia, they store food in roots. 
So what is the answer? Plant that has an aerial root, it is vanilla. Then we'll move on to the next question. Adaptation shown by temple trees to reduce transpiration. So look at the example, temple trees to reduce transpiration. Leaves are reduced to spines. Is it? No, that is in plants like cactus. Thick waxy cuticle is present, that is correct. Temple trees, yellow oleander, they all have thick waxy cuticle. Leaves carry out photosynthesis. Leaves do carry out photosynthesis. That is a correct statement, but not a correct answer. Why is that? Here they have asked adaptation shown by temple trees to reduce transpiration. So the temple tree leaves doing photosynthesis is not an adaptation for reducing transpiration. So you have to understand that students. Then if you look at the fourth one, presence of thin leaves. No, that is in kasa or savukku. You have seen that. So what is the correct answer? Adaptation shown by temple trees to reduce transpiration, it is the presence of thick waxy cuticle. Thick waxy cuticle is present. Tenth one, plants that reproduce by runners. You can remember what runners are. What is the other name? Stolons. So plants that reproduce by runners, begonia, they reproduce by leaves. So here it's leaves. Then curry leaves, they reproduce by roots. Undupia lea, that is correct, runners. Onions also stems, but those are underground, underground stems. Underground stem. So here the answer is Undupia lea. Now students, when you are answering questions, you don't have to write all this. I am doing that so you remember all the information. When we recall it again and again, you remember them better. So that is the reason. So plants that reproduce by runners, it's Undupia lea. The next one, pair of plants that propagate by roots. So the pair of plants that propagate by roots. So both have to propagate by roots. Ginger and turmeric, what is that? It is underground stems. Curry leaves and breadfruit, that is of course correct. They reproduce by roots, propagate by roots. Jambu, it has fruits, the seeds. Guava, guava roots are also there plus fruits. But jambu is not an answer. So here, this is correct, this is wrong. Here both of them are stem. Mango and jack, again fruits. So that is normal sexual reproduction. So the correct answer is curry leaves and breadfruit. So that is how you have to answer questions. Not only select the correct answer, but think of all the answers. Understand them as well. Then leaf with curled tip. Now beetle leaf, you can remember. It has a normal sharp Cobolila, no, that has a divided. Now, beetle has a leaf tip like this. Cobolila has something like this. Niagala, you can remember, it has a curl tip like that. And bitter gourd, of course, it has a kind of a, uh, like a lobed leaf like that. But still, the tip is somewhat pointed. So, what is the suitable one? It is Niagala. Now, do you all understand? Always recall what you have studied, students. Then it's easy to revise. The next one. Leaf arrangement means leaves can be of different colors. Yes, that's possible. We have discussed crotons, different colors. You would have seen brown, yellow, maroon, different colors. Leaves have different shapes. That's also true. That is the diversity of leaves. Leaf blade can be broad or thin, that's also true. But those are not leaf arrangements. The way leaves are fixed to the stem. 
that is the meaning of leaf arrangement. So leaf arrangement means the way leaves are fixed to the stem. Then we have the 14th question. Plants that possess tap root. This you know, you have discussed or learnt before also. Plants with tap roots. So plants that possess tap root, that you know well students. Usually the dicots have tap roots. Coconut has a fibrous root. Jack has a tap root. Jack, mango, both of them have tap root. Mango, tap root. Puak, it has a fibrous root. Again, puak and kitul both have fibrous root. So the correct answer is jack and mango. Both of them have tap roots. Then the next one. Question number 15. Plants with compound leaves. You know what compound leaves are. What are compound leaves? Now you have a leaf like that. There are small leaflets like this. That is a compound leaf. Or else if you have a leaf like this, small leaflets like that, that is also compound leaf. So there are different types of compound leaves. It doesn't have just one leaf blade. It has many small leaflets together. So plants with compound leaves. Cotton? No. Mango? No. Both of them have simple leaves. Mango? Again simple leaf. Coconut? Yes. Coconut and puak, yes, they both have, you know what puak is. Puak means arika, arika nut or pak in Tamil. So coconut and puak, both of them have compound leaves. Puak has compound leaf, jack has simple leaf. So plants with compound leaves, the correct answer is coconut and puak. Plants that store food in their tap roots, you can remember the example. Carrot, radish, beetroot, all these store food in their tap root. So look at the examples. Manioc, sweet potato. Manioc and sweet potato, adventitious root. So they store food in adventitious root. Adventitious roots. Sweet potato, dahlia. What is that? That again, adventitious root. So that is also adventitious root. Dahlia carrot, dahlia adventitious root, carrot tap root. Then carrot and radish, they store in tap root. So these are in tap root. Plants that store food in their tap roots. That's the question. Then we have the next one. Not a main function of jack leaves. Not a main function of jack leaves. Not the main function. Photosynthesis. Now it is the leaf. Obviously the main function of the leaf is photosynthesis. So that is correct. What about respiration? Now you all know plant leaves take in carbon dioxide in the presence of sunlight. That is to do photosynthesis. But in the night time and also during daytime, they respire. They have to take in oxygen. So respiration is taking place all the time. So that is also a function of jack leaves. Then transpiration. How does transpiration take place? Through the stomata, water evaporates. So that is also happening in all the plants with leaves. So that is also a main function. Fourth one, storage of food. Now this is the jack leaves. You have to look at the example carefully. Jack leaves, do they store food? No. So they don't carry out that function. They do photosynthesis, they do respiration and transpiration, but they don't store food. So not a main function of jack leaves, it is storage of food. Then the next one, plants that store food in stems. Again, store food in stem. So, always students, look at all the terms because you have learned storage in different parts. So, store food in stems. Sugarcane, kitul. They do store food in 
stems. Those are the two examples. Kithul, yes. Coconut, no. They don't store food in the stem. Again, coconut doesn't store food. Red fruit also fruit. So, they all have fruits. Bread fruit and jack, they also store food in fruits. So, what is the correct answer? Plants that store food in stems, sugar cane and kithu. The next one. So, that is the 19th question. Example of photosynthetic stems. Photosynthetic stems. You all know what photosynthetic stems are. Now, kithul, does it have a photosynthetic stem? It stores food in the stem. Breadfruit, breadfruit, what is it? What is the adaptation? It has propagative roots. Breadfruit again, propagative roots. Kasa, what is the adaptation? To reduce transpiration, the leaves are very thin. Cactus, they have photosynthetic stems. Why? The leaves are reduced to spines. Cactus is an example. Daluk also has a photosynthetic stem. So that is correct. Then the fourth one, Daluk again has a photosynthetic stem. But beans, what is the stem present? It is a climbing stem. So what's the correct answer? Example of photosynthetic stems, cactus and Daluk. Is that correct students? Okay. Then the last one here. Not an adaptation of leaves to reduce transpiration. Look at the question. Not an adaptation to reduce transpiration. The two terms are very important. Has a broad leaf blade. Of course, if the leaf blade is large, there will be more transpiration taking place. So that is not an adaptation. Thin leaf blade. Yes. Can you remember examples? Thin leaf blade. Kasa or Savukku. Thick waxy cuticle. Temple trees, yellow oleander, they have thick waxy cuticle. And leaves become spine. What is that? Cactus. So those are all adaptations of reducing transpiration. So not an adaptation of leaves to reduce transpiration is to have a broad leaf blade. That is not an adaptation. Is that clear to you all student? So with that, I have finished the MCQ questions. Now I will move on to the rest of the extra questions. I am sure up to here, you were able to answer the questions first and you answered them correctly. So with that, I will move on to the next one. Extra question 2. Give a scientific reason. So students, you have to read the sentence or the statement and you have to give a scientific reason. Scientific reason means why that is adapted in that manner. So that is how you explain it scientifically. So the first one, roots arise from the branches of banyan tree. So what is the scientific reason there? What are those roots called? Those are the prop roots. And why do they arise from the branches? To bear the weight of the branch by rooting into the soil. So that is what you have to write here. So you can say roots arise from the branch from the branch and penetrate into soil in order to bear the branches. So you have to mention the reason there. Then the next one. Leaves of cactus become spines. So you have to see why they become spines? What is the reason? To reduce transpiration. Why should that be there? Because cactus is a plant that lives in arid environment, grows well in arid environments. So here we have to say to reduce transpiration.
transpiration leaves are reduced to spine because they grow in arid environments so students when you explain about why the leaves have to become spines to reduce transpiration and why that is necessary because they are in the arid environment so when you include the two points you are giving a complete answer so then the next one the third part you can see here in most plants leaves are arranged in order to absorb more sunlight so how can you explain that you know about leaf arrangements why do they need to arrange they can just be there randomly what do you have to say when they absorb sunlight efficiently they can carry out photosynthesis efficiently that is the scientific reason so here you can say in most plants most plants leaves are arranged to absorb sunlight efficiently therefore they can carry out photosynthesis efficiently so here again students you have to mention when they absorb sunlight efficiently the amount of photosynthesis will increase so that is how you write answers where you need to explain scientifically so again if we look at the question you can see give a scientific reason so for all three we have given the scientific reason roots arise from the branches of banyan tree so you have to say roots arise from the branch and penetrate into soil in order to bear the branches so you are, you are explaining then leaves of cactus become spines to reduce transpiration leaves are reduced to spines because the plant grows in arid environment and the third one in most plants you can see in most plants leaves are arranged to absorb sunlight efficiently therefore they can carry out photosynthesis efficiently so now you all know how to explain statements in a scientific manner with that i will move on to the next question extra question 3 so here there are some plants those are the examples that you have to use to answer these questions sugarcane breadfruit jack coconut puwak you know what puwak is that is the arecanut plant mango paddy curry leaves belly gotukola guava kathuru murunga cashew kithul rose ginger and turmeric now these are plants that you have in your environment you would have seen around you so you all are familiar with their adaptations so now we we'll look at the questions write the plants that possesses the following type of roots tap root fibrous root and propagative roots we have discussed all three write the plants that possess the following types of stems 
again different adaptations, propagative stems, aerial stems that store food, underground stems that store food. And the third question, write the plants that possess compound leaves. So what should you do now? You have to write the answer first, then listen to the discussion to confirm that you have written the correct answer. So I will move on to the first part of the question. Again the examples are there so that it's easy for us to look at the examples and write. Write the plants that possess the following types of roots. So here it's the roots. You have to look at all the examples and write whatever you can here. Tap root. Sugar cane, what is the root? It is the fibrous root. So sugar cane. What is breadfruit? What is the type of fruit? It has to be tap root. So breadfruit comes here. Breadfruit. Then jack that also has tap root. Coconut, what is the root? It has to be fibrous. So coconut. If we write like that, it's easy. Puak, again fibrous. How about mango? Mango is tap root. Mango tap root. Paddy, what is the root there? In paddy, there is fibrous roots. So paddy also comes here. Then curry leaves. What are curry leaves? They also have the tap root. So curry leaves come here. Curry leaves. And another feature. Curry leaves, how do they propagate? They propagate by roots. So they have to come as an example for propagative root as well. Curry leaf here also. So in this question students, you will write the same answer either for tap root or fibrous root and propagative root. Why? Both roots can act as propagative root, mainly the tap root. Then we have to look at belly. Now belly, what type of root is that? That is also tap root. Again, it is a propagative root. So belly comes here. Then go to collar. Go to collar, it is a runner and it usually forms the fibrous or it's actually the adventitious root. So we won't be writing it here. Guava, what about guava? Guava again, it has propagative roots. So guava, propagative roots. Then kathurumurunga, what is the root present in kathurumurunga? It is the tap root. So here kathurumurunga, murunga, tap root. Cashew, that is also tap root. What about kitul? Kitul has fibrous roots. Monocot plants. Rose, tap root. Rose has tap root. And ginger. Ginger, of course, it has the underground stem. So because of that, it is a different type. So then if we look at all the plants, now tap root. We have written breadfruit, jack, mango, curry leaves, kathurumurunga, cashew and rose. Did you all write all those? I am sure you did. Then fibrous roots. What are the examples? Sugar cane, coconut, puak, paddy and kitul. And from your knowledge from the previous grade, you know these are all dicot plants and fibrous roots are present in monocot plants. Then propagative roots, we have written curry leaves, belly and guava. There is one more that I haven't written. What is that? It is breadfruit. Now breadfruit also propagates by roots. So we have to include that also here. Breadfruit. So we have discussed the first three examples, curry leaves, belly and guava. In addition to that, Breadfruit also propagates by
So then I will move on to the next part of the question. Write the plants that possess the following types of stems. So earlier it was the roots, now the stems. What is the first one? Propagative stem. Then the second one is aerial stems that store food and underground stems that store food. Then the third question is write the plants that possess compound leaves. So if we answer this question, for propagative stems, what can you write? Sugarcane, does it propagate? No. Breadfruit, no. Jack, coconut, puak, mango. What about paddy? Paddy has suckers. So that is a propagative stem. Paddy. Then what do we have? Curry leaves by roots. Belly, roots. Go to color. Yes, they have runners. So that is by stems. Go to color. How about guava? Guava again, it is by root. Katurumurunga, the normal sexual reproduction. Cashew, fruits. Kithul, storage stem. What about rose? Now you have seen in gardens, in your home gardens, they cut. They take a stem cutting, cut a part of the stem and replant it. So that is known as stem cutting. So that is also a method of propagation. So rose also has propagative stems. Then ginger. Yes, it is the underground propagative stem. So ginger. Then what else? So after ginger, it is Turmeric. So these are the plants that reproduce or propagate by stems, propagative stems. Then we have aerial stems that store food. Can you find the examples out of all these plants? Now you can see sugarcane and kithul are examples of aerial stems that store food. So you have to write sugarcane and kithul. Then we have underground stems that store food. Now out of these, can you find the underground stems? Now if you look at paddy, reproduces by suckers. So that is not an underground stem. And all the others, none of them have underground stem. Only ginger and turmeric has underground stems. So underground stems that store food, the examples are ginger and turmeric. So now we have written all the examples here. Propagative stems, paddy by suckers, go to color by runner or stolon, rose by stem cutting, ginger and turmeric by underground stems. Aerial stems that store food, sugarcane and keto and underground stems that store food ginger and turmeric. Then I will move on to the next question. Write the plants that possess compound leaves. So you know the plants that have compound leaves. Look at the first one. Sugarcane, it has compound leaves. So we will write that here. Sugarcane. Then breadfruit, simple leaves. Jack, simple leaves. Coconut, yes, that has compound leaves. After coconut, we have puak. That is also compound leaves. Puak. Then what do we have? Mango, it's simple leaves. Paddy, simple leaves. Curry leaves, they have compound leaves. So curry leaves. Curry leaves are compound leaves. Belly, simple. Go to color, simple. Guava, simple leaves. What about Katurumurunga? That also has compound leaves. Katurumurunga. Then we have cashew. No. Kithul also has compound leaves. So we have kithul plant. That also has compound leaves. 
then we have rose, ginger, turmeric. None of them have compound leaves. So write the plants that possess compound leaves. Sugarcane, coconut, puak, curry leaves, kathuru murunga and kitu. Is that clear to you all now students? So this is how you select the plants from the given list and answer the question. With that, I will move on to the next one. Extra question 4. Label the parts of the plant given below. So students, I am sure you can label all the parts given here. Parts of the plant. So I will start with part A. What is shown here? It is the flowers. So here A is flowers. How about B? B is the fruit. You can write it as fruit or fruits because there are many fruits shown there. Then what about C? C is the leaf. And here you can see D is the stem of the plant. And E, what is this main root? That is the tap root. So here it is the tap root. And what you get as F? Those are the branches or you can call them the lateral roots. I will write both the names. Lateral roots or you can say branches. So then all these parts which are above the ground. Flowers, fruits, leaf, stem, everything is above the ground. All together, what do we call that part of the plant? It is the shoot system. So that is what we have to lay right here. So G is the shoot system. System. Whereas the tap root and the lateral roots to here, that is marked as H, that is below the soil, that is the root system. So H is the root system. So now we have labeled all the parts. You, can you see everything clearly? A flowers, B fruits, C leaf, then D stem, E is the tap root, then you can see the lateral roots or the branches that is labeled as F and on this side we have the shoot system that is this part and the root system below the soil. So I am sure you were able to mark all of them correctly. With that I will move on to the next question. Write the main functions of the parts of the plants shown below. So all the parts are given to you. You have to write the main functions. I will start with part A. So part A is what? That is the flower. Flower is involved in sexual reproduction. So the sexual reproduction. You don't have to write a long answer. You can write it in a short form. Sexual reproduction is carried out by flowers. Then what about B? Fruits. Again, they store food as well as they are involved in sexual reproduction. Why? Because inside the fruits, there are seeds. When you eat the fruit, when animals, birds, they consume the fruit, they throw the seed somewhere else. And from the seed, a new plant grows. So we can say for B, storage of food. and reproduction. Reproduction by seeds. I'll just write that in brackets. Then what about C? You know the function. Leaves, the main function is photosynthesis. See, photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Then what about D? D is the stem. 
So what do we write for stems? To hold the plant upright, then to bear the other parts of the plant, transport water and minerals. So write the main function. So we have to write all three functions there. So D is the stem. For that, the functions bear the branches, leaves, fruits and flowers. Then second one you can say keep the plant upright and also we can say this is the this is the first function then the second function and third one we can say transport water and minerals to the upper part of the plant, upper part of the plant. Then what is the next one? It is E. E is root. F is the lateral roots or the branches. So both have the same function. We can write it together. So I will write it as E and F. So root the plant. Root the plant to the soil. You can say root the plant or fix the plant to the soil and then we can say absorb water and minerals from the soil. So those are the parts. Now there's nothing to write for parts G and H because that is the shoot system and root system. We have already explained everything for all the parts in the shoot system as well as the root system. So I will go through the functions again. So a is the flower, so that is for sexual reproduction. Then B is the fruit, that is storage of food as well as reproduction because it has the seeds. Then C is the leaf, that is for photosynthesis. And D is the stem, it bears the branches, leaves, fruits and flowers. You can say bears the branches, leaves, fruits and flowers. And also it keeps the plant upright and transport water and minerals to the upper parts of the plant. Then if we look at the part E and F. E and F, tap root and the lateral roots. So they are responsible to root the plant to the soil or fix the plant to the soil and absorb water and minerals from the soil. So those are the main functions of the different parts of the plant. I am sure you were also able to write it correctly. So with that students, I will move on to the next question. Extra question 5. Most significant part of the plant is the leaf that you know. Label the parts of the plant leaf given below. So you have to label the parts of the plant. 
So here, what can you see here? A is the stock or the petiole, right? So A, I'll write both the names. You can write one name that is enough. Stock or petiole. Petiole or petiole. Then what? I'll mark the G here because it's on this side. It is the leaf base. Then I will move on to the parts on this side. What is B? It is the mid rib. B is the mid rib. C, these are the veins of the plant leaf. What is D? It is the leaf tip. E, the leaf, the surface, that is the lamina, lamina, or what else do we call it? The leaf blade, leaf blade. So here also I am writing both the names. You can write one of the names. That's more than enough. Then what is F? That is the leaf margin. Leaf margin. So did you all label all those parts correctly students? A is stalk or petiole. Then B is the midrib, C is the veins, then D is the leaf tip, E lamina or leaf blade, and F leaf margin, and G the leaf base. Is that correct? I am sure you all also got it correctly. With that, the next question. Extra question 6. What is the main biological process that takes place in the plant leaf? So here, Look at the question. They are asking you for the main biological process. When I discuss leaves, I told you all the main function of leaves is photosynthesis. But in addition to that, there are other functions. What are they? Respiration and transpiration. You all can remember that. So here, what is the main biological process? It is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Then the next question, write the relevant word equation for the process you mentioned above. So for photosynthesis, you have to write the word equation. If we write that here, what are the raw materials needed? Carbon dioxide and water. So carbon dioxide, I will write it below. Dioxide plus water. What do we need? Light energy. Normally plants get light energy from the sunlight and the plant needs to have chlorophyll. What are the products? The main product is glucose. And the byproduct is oxygen. So, were you all able to write this? Carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of light energy in chlorophylls of the plant leaf, glucose and oxygen are produced. So, that is the relevant word equation for the process of photosynthesis. So, the previous question is to write the main biological process taking place in leaf that is photosynthesis and this is the word equation for photosynthesis. So write the relevant word equation for the process you mentioned above carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of light energy in the chlorophyll of plants glucose is produced and in addition to that oxygen is the byproduct. So here glucose is the food that is produced. You can also write it as food. Instead of glucose is the substance but you can also write it as food. So is that clear to you all students? Right. Then I will move on to the next question. Extra question 7. 
write three adaptations shown by leaves to carry out photosynthesis efficiently. What are the three adaptations? You can think of those. Always the leaf blades are thin and flat. That is always the leaves are thin and flat. That is one adaptation. Then there is a leaf blade or the lamina is broad. That is also to absorb sunlight efficiently. And then they are arranged in a certain arrangement. There is a leaf arrangement. So you can write all those three as the adaptations. So here leaves are, we can say leaves are thin and flat. Then have broad leaf blade blade in brackets I will say lamina you can say either leaf blade or lamina either word is fine I am writing all the terms here so that you get used to it but when you are answering the question you can stick to just one term so they have a broad leaf blade or lamina then they have different leaf arrangements so they have asked for the adaptation shown by leaves so the way they arrange is also an adaptation so then the next one how is leaf arrangement related to photosynthesis? How is it related? When they arrange in a certain manner, say they are alternate on either side of the stem or they are opposite at the same point or else they can have a whirl arrangement around, around one point of the stem or a spiral arrangement. Whatever the arrangement is, all the leaves get exposed to sunlight so that they all can absorb sunlight efficiently. So that is what you have to write here. In all leaf arrangements, the, all the leaves are exposed to sunlight. So you can say due to, due to leaf arrangement, all the leaves of the plant are exposed to sunlight. So they can absorb light energy efficiently for photosynthesis. So that is what you have to write. How is leaf arrangement related to photosynthesis? Due to leaf arrangement, all the leaves of the plant are exposed to sunlight. So they can absorb light energy efficiently for photosynthesis. So I am sure you also can write a similar answer. So then the next one, extra question 8. What is meant by leaf arrangement? So we just discussed leaf arrangement. What is meant by leaf arrangement? The way in which leaves are attached to the stem. That is what you have to write here. The way leaves are attached to the st 
system of a plant. Is that correct? The leaf arrangement, what is meant by leaf arrangement? The way leaves are attached to the stem of a plant. So you can just give the explanation or to complete the sentence, you can say is known as leaf arrangement. Is that clear? Okay. So then the next question. Write examples for the types of leaf arrangements given below. So write examples for the types of leaf arrangements given below. Leaves are on alternate side of the stem. If they are on alternate side of the stem, what is the example? It is anona. So the one example that you have learned is anona. Then leaves are attached in a spiral manner around the stem. A spiral manner. What is the example? It is kandha. Kandha plant. So when we write the Sinhala or Tamil name, normally we write it within inverted commas like that. So in order to show that it's not the English name. Then leaf attachments paired at nodes and in opposite directions. Paired at nodes and opposite directions. What is it? It is guava. Three or more leaves attach at each node on the stem in a whirl. What is the example? Rukhatana plant. So here we have to write it as Rukhatana. So those are the examples. Write examples for the types of leaf arrangements given below. Leaves are on alternate sides of the stem, it's anona. Then leaves are attached in a spiral manner around the stem, it's kandha. And leaf attachments paired at nodes and in opposite directions, it's guava. Three or more leaves attach at each node on the stem in a whirl, it's rook atan. So those are the plants. I'm sure you all were able to write all these answers. With that, I will move on to the next. Extra question 9. What is transpiration? What is transpiration? Evaporation of water from plants. So, a very simple answer. Transpiration is evaporation of water. Evaporation of water from plants. So that process is known as transpiration. What is the advantage of transpiration to plants? When transpiration occurs that generates a force that helps to transport water and minerals to upper parts of the plant. So that is the advantage of transpiration. So that is what we have to write here. Due to the pull generated by transpiration, water and minerals are transported to the upper part of the plant through the stem. So that is the advantage. What is the advantage of transpiration to plants? Due to the pull generated by the transpiration, 
water and minerals are transported to the upper parts of the plant through the stem. You don't even have to mention through the stem but that gives you a complete answer. So students, you all have to write to the point but at the same time it's better if you can give a complete answer so that you don't leave out any points. So with that, I will move on to the next question. Extra question 10. Write two adaptations shown by plants in arid environments to minimize transpiration. We have discussed four different adaptations. Can you all remember that? The plants can have, the leaves can have thick waxy cuticles. The leaves can be reduced to spines. They can have reduced number of leaves. Or else they can have thin leaves. So you can write any two answers. Write two adaptations shown by plants in arid environments to minimize transpiration. So I will say thick waxy cuticle of leaf then thin leaves. You can write the other two points as well. You can write any two adaptations. Then write the adaptation shown by the plants given below to minimize transpiration. So what do you see in cactus? In cactus the leaves are reduced to spines. So that's what we have to write here. Leaves are reduced to spines. Then what about Navahandi or Kali plant? What is the adaptation there? The reduced number of leaves. So here reduced number of leaves. How about Kasa or Savukku plant? What happens there? They have very thin leaves. So thin leaves. Then we have the last two plants. Yellow oleander. Yellow oleander has a thick waxy cuticle. Thick waxy cuticle. And the last one. Here is a or pirate. Again, that has reduced number of leaves. So, reduced number of leaves. So, those are the answers. Write two adaptation shown by plants in arid environments to minimize transpiration. Thick waxy cuticle of leaf or thin leaves. You can write the other two also, reduce number of leaves or leaves become spines or leaves are reduced to spines. Then write the adaptation shown by the plants given below to minimize transpiration. Cactus leaves are reduced to spines. Navahandi or Kali reduced number of leaves. Then Kasa or Savukku, they have thin leaves. Yellow oleander has thick waxy cuticle and Hiresa or Pirate again reduce number of leaves. Did you all get all these correctly? I am sure you did. With that, I will move on to the next question. Extra question 11. Write two leaves that have special structures to store water in leaves. Can you all remember those? Those are adaptations to live in arid environments. What are the plants? One is aloe, the other one is acapana. So those are the examples. Aloe plant and acapana. Then the next one. Briefly explain two examples of plants that reproduce by leaves. So what are the plants that reproduce by leaves? You all can remember. Acapana, begonia and peperomia. 
So here we have already written akapana, akapana, what happens there? You can remember the shape of the leaf, it's a wavy leaf margin from those curves. The roots are produced. So here they have told us to explain two examples. So the first example I will write as first one, akapana. So in this what I can say is roots are produced near the curves let's see of the leaf margin. And they grow into a new plant. So to make it more clear, what I will do is, student, I will draw a simple diagram. Now if that is the leaf, like this. So, roots are formed from these points. So, this is the leaf and these are the roots that form new plants. That is for Akapan. So, if you find it difficult to explain it using words only, what you can do is you can draw a diagram. So it's easy for you. So these are what I said, the curves of the leaf margin. Is that clear to you all? We have to explain two plants. Then what are the other two plants? Peperomia and begonia. So I'll say begonia. Begonia, we discuss the activity. What do we do there? You put a small cut across the vein of the leaf and cover it with soil. And then there will be root formation that can grow into a new plant. So here we can see a small cut is made across the vein of a leaf, it is covered with covered with soil and watered for few days until root formation. Then new plants are produced from leaf, from leaf. So I will go through both the answers again. Briefly explain two examples of plants that we produce by leaves. Akapana roots are produced near the curves of the leaf margin that is here and they grow into a new plant. So from these points, once the root forms, there is a new plant growing. Then begonia, a small cut is made across the vein of a leaf. It is covered with soil and watered for few days until root formation. Then new plants are produced from leaf. 
So is that clear? Because we were supposed to briefly explain two examples of plants that reproduce by leaves. So with that, I will move on to the next question. Extra question 12. Write the two types of stems based on where they are found. So what are the two types? One is the aerial stem or the above the ground stem and the other one is the underground stem. So aerial stem, aerial or above the ground stem. What is the other one? Second one is underground stem. So there is nothing to go wrong here no students. I am sure you would have written it correctly. With that I will move on to the next one. Fill in the blanks given below regarding the stems of plants. So the first column gives you the function or nature of the stem and the second column is the examples. So what is the first one? Above the ground stems that reproduce. So can you think of above the ground stems? There are runners or stolons. What are the examples? You can write go to color. Then you can write any other plant similar to go to color. Or like if you take the banana, paddy, those plants also reproduce by what? Those are over the ground stems which are known as suckers. So you can write any example. So above the ground stems that reproduce, so I will write the example as go to color. Then the second one, paddy is an example. We have to write the function or nature of stem. What can you write for the nature of stem? So at I told you all a little while ago, we can say they reproduce by suckers. So here I can say reproduction, action by suckers. Then aerial stem that stores food. What are the aerial stems? You all know sugar cane and ketone. You can write one of the answers here. I'll write sugar cane. Sugar cane. You can also write ketone. Then we have to write the nature of the stem for potato plant. What is that? Underground stem that stores food. Underground stem. On stem that stores food. Then the next one, Daluk or Sadurakkalli. What is the adaptation there? Those are photosynthetic stems. Photosynthetic stems. Then the last one, we have the climbing stems. What can you write for climbing stems? We can say beans. Beans, even you can write pepper. Anyone can be beetle, pepper, beans. One of the examples can be written here. So fill in the blanks given below regarding the stems of plants. So here we have function or nature and the example above the ground stems that reproduce. Example is go to color, reproduction by suckers, paddy, aerial stem that stores food, sugar cane, underground stem that stores food, potato, photosynthetic stems, daluk or sadurakalli and climbing stems, beans. So I am sure you were able to fill in the blanks. Then the next one. Extra question 13. Write two main functions of underground stems. Two main functions. What are the functions? One is storing food, stores food. The other one is perination. What is perination? To withstand 
environment hostile or adverse environmental conditions to survive through that that is perination and also asexual reproduction here they have asked only for two main functions so you can write any two so i will say storage of food of food and the other one perination perination then the next one write two functions carried out by the plant roots what are two functions carried out by the plant roots fix the plant to the soil and absorb water and minerals so you know the functions so fix the plant to the soil absorb water and minerals from soil then the next one write the main difference between the roots of monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous plants you all know examples of monocot plants or monocotyledonous plants coconut and dicotyledonous plants or dicots mango tree so monocots monocotyledonous plants have fibrous roots and the dicotyledonous plants have tap root with lateral roots you all have learned that before so that is what you have to write here mono cots have fibrous roots so here students since it's given as monocotyledonous plants i'm writing it as monocots it refers to the same type and dicots is tap root with branches or you can say lateral roots or tap root system anything is fine so they have asked for to write the main difference main difference between the roots of monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous plants so i am sure you would have written all these correctly write two main functions of underground stems storage of food and perination then write two functions carried out by the plant roots fix the plant to the soil absorb water and minerals from soil and write the main difference between the roots of monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous plants monocots have fibrous roots and dicots have tap roots with branches is that correct okay so then i will move on to the next question so extra question 14 connect the relevant answers so here students you can see there are features of stems and roots given to you and there are some examples given to you you have to connect the relevant plant we'll first read the plants vanilla pepper turmeric manioc peperomia sugarcane anona navahandi ratkadol and rampe so now we'll connect them with the relevant characteristic aerial stem that stores food so you know sugarcane stores food so here you have to connect it with sugarcane then storage of food in adventitious root what is that it is manioc so here it's manioc then aerial roots aerial roots are found in vanilla so here it is this aerial root in vanilla what about prop roots look at the examples it's found in ratkadol prop roots are found in ratkadol then still roots still roots are found in rampe plant so here still roots in rampe plant then clasping roots if it is a climber plant a thin stem then there can be clasping roots look at the examples pepper pepper has clasping roots 
then food storage in underground stem food storage in underground stem look at the examples that are left here now turmeric has food storage in underground stem turmeric propagative leaves from what plant do you get propagative leaves look at the examples peperomia peperomia has propagative leaves leaves on alternate sides of the stem two more plants left it has to be anona leaves on alternate sides of the stem and then the last one photosynthetic stem now navahandi you can remember we discussed it as an example for reduced number of leaves at the same time i showed you all the plant i told you all the stem it's green in color it's somewhat fleshy and that is a photosynthetic stem so photosynthetic stem navahandi so is it correct now students so aerial stem that stores food sugarcane storage of food in adventitious root manioc then aerial root vanilla prop roots rathkadol still roots rampe plant then clasping roots in pepper food storage in underground stem that is turmeric propagative leaves that is peperomia then leaves on alternate sides of the stem that is anona and photosynthetic stem navahandi i am sure you were also able to connect it properly so with that i will move on to the next one extra question 15 leaves of plants can be considered as a factory that produces food that is correct no students because inside plant leaves only food is produced by the process of photosynthesis so then the first question what is the name given to the process of producing food in leaves i just told you all the name it's photosynthesis so you have to write the name as photosynthesis then the next question what are the ingredients needed to produce food by green plants or green leaves here what are the ingredients carbon dioxide and water so you have to be careful students carbon dioxide and water are either known as raw materials or ingredients but sunlight light energy and chlorophyll are the factors needed so don't confuse the two here it is the ingredient so it's carbon dioxide and water what is the energy utilized by plants to synthesize food so what is the energy light energy so here we have to write it as light energy why they have asked what is the energy so what type of energy that is light energy so i am sure you were able to write all the answers correctly with that i will move on to the next question what are the processes that take place in the plant leaves other than photosynthesis now look at the question carefully other than photosynthesis what are the functions i mentioned this to you all before also plant leaves they do respiration and there is transpiration taking place you can remember that so the functions respiration and transpiration in respiration what happens they intake oxygen and release carbon dioxide in transpiration water evaporates through the leaves of the plant why are most of the leaves green in color why are most of the leaves green in color because they contain the pigment chlorophyll or you can say green colored pigment chlorophyll because they contain the green colored pigment 
chlorophyll. So that is why most of the leaves are green in color. So with that I will move on to the next question. Extra question 17. Mark the sentences given below as correct and wrong. So you have to read the sentence carefully and put a tick if it's correct or wrong if it's false. Akapana reproduces by their leaves. Is that correct? Yes. So that is a true statement. Plant leaves are specialized to store food. Are they specialized to store food? No, they are specialized to do photosynthesis. So false. Coconut trees possess fibrous roots. That's correct, no? Coconut trees are monocotyledonous plants, so they have a fibrous root, correct. There are special pores called stomata in the lower epidermis of leaves. Yes, through the stomata only, gas exchange takes place. Carbon dioxide comes in, oxygen goes out, or oxygen comes in, carbon dioxide goes out. Gas exchange for both photosynthesis and respiration. So, there are special pores called stomata in the lower epidermis of leaves. Correct. Leaves of the rose plants are reduced to thorns. Rose plants have thorns. That's correct. But is it the leaves? No. Because rose plants do not show adaptation to reduce transpiration. So, that's not the leaf that has become the thorn. It's part of the stem. So, because of that, because they say leaves are reduced to thorns, this is false. Then Undupiali, a plant, propagates by stem. That is correct. They are runners. So, they reproduce by stem. Food is stored in the stems of ketul plant. That is also correct. Food storage stems. Food is stored in the tap roots of manioc. Is it the tap root of manioc? No, it's the adventitious root of manioc. So that is also false. Then ginger has underground stems. Yes, that is the food storage, perination as well as asexual reproduction in ginger. Then the last one, adventitious roots that arise from the branches of the banyan tree is known as prop roots. That's correct. They go into the soil and help to bear the branches. So that is the prop root. That is also true. So Akapana reproduces by their leaves. Correct. Plant leaves are specialized to store food. False. Coconut trees possess fibrous roots. Correct. There are special pores called stomata in the lower epidermis of leaves. Correct. Leaves of the rose plant are Reduced to thorns, that's false. Undupiali, a plant propagates by stem, correct. Food is stored in the stems of kittle plant, correct. Then food is stored in the tap roots of manioc, that is false. Ginger has underground stems, that is correct. And adventitious roots that arise from the branches of banyan tree is known as prop roots, that is also correct. And I am sure you all also got everything correctly. With that, I will move on to the next question. Extra question 18. Select the correct answer from within the brackets and fill in the blanks. So there is a blank, is a plant that possesses an underground stem. Carrot or turmeric. It is turmeric. Turmeric is a plant that possesses underground stems. Turmeric. Then the next one. Plant possesses a stilt root. Beetle or Vatakeya, which possesses a still root, it's Vatakeya. Vatakeya. So you know why they put these inverted commas. Then plant reproduces by propagative roots. What is that? Belly or coconut? It's belly. Belly plant reproduces by propagative roots. Then the main function of the plant leaf is photosynthesis or storing water. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Then the next one. 
evaporation of water from leaves is known as photosynthesis or transpiration. It's transpiration. Transpiration. Leaves of plants are arranged in a whirl around stem. So, rook athana or guava, which is correct. It's rook athana. So, leaves of rook athana plant. Athana plant are arranged in a whirl around the stem. Then, what about guava? It is the opposite arrangement. So that's not an example there. Then leaves of are reduced to spines. Now in aloe, they have the leaf that store water. In cactus, leaves are reduced to spines. So leaves of cactus are reduced to spines. Then we have the eighth one. Food is stored in the Blank of carrot, stem or root. Carrot is a root. So food is stored in the root of carrot. And the last one, plant has simple leaves, jack or coconut. Jack has simple leaves, coconut has compound leaves. You know that. So jack plant has simple leaves. So I'll go through the answers again. Turmeric is a plant that possesses an underground stem. Watakeya plant possesses a stilt root. Belly plant produces by propagative roots. The main function of plant leaves is photosynthesis. Evaporation of water from leaves is known as transpiration. Leaves of root cut a plant are arranged in a world around the stem. Leaves of cactus are reduced to spines. Food is stored in the root of carrot. And jack plant has simple leaves. Did you all get everything correctly students? I am sure you did. There is no confusion here. You know all the plants. We have discussed all their properties. So it would have been easy for you all to write all of them correctly. With that I will move on to the next one. Extra question 90. What are the functions of the plant stem? What are the functions of the plant stem? To bear the fruits, leaves, branches, flowers, all those. Then to keep the plant upright as well as transport water and minerals to upper parts of the plant. So what are the functions? Then you have to write all the functions. So bears the leaves, fruits, flowers, etc. Then keeps the plant upright. Keeps the plant upright. What is the other one? Transport food, water and minerals to the upper part of the plant. Then the next question. In some plants, there are roots in the stem that help them fix to a substrate. Write two such plants. You all can remember them. Beetle and pepper. They have the climbing stems or they are climbers. So they have the climbing roots or clasping roots. So in some plants, you have to write two such examples. Beetle and pepper. So they have the roots in the stem that help them fix to a surface, right to such plants. Is this correct? 
So with that, I will move on to the last question. Extra question 20. Write two plants that store food in stems. Can you tell the examples? Sugarcane and Kithul. Write two plants that store food in stems. But here you can also include underground stems. But we will just stick to the aerial stems. I will write sugarcane, sugarcane and kithul. Because they have not mentioned what stem. You can write any. But here I have written both examples where food is stored in the aerial stem, above the ground stem. Then the next question, write two plants with underground stem. So here you have to write the plants with underground stems. What are they? You can write potato, onions, ginger, turmeric, anything can be written here. So here I will say ginger and potato. You can also write onions and turmeric. So with that, I have come to the end of discussion of extra questions. And for that matter, I have completed the discussion on unit 3. That is diversity of plants. So students, I am sure you have understood the lesson. So listen to the discuss again to clarify doubts, read your textbook and practice as many questions as possible. That will make you competent to answer any type of question related to this lesson.